Hi. Here I am to review another book. This one is called The Age of Myth by Michael J. Sullivan. The first in a pentology, a series of five books featuring uh, the history 3,000 years before this other series, the Naira Chronicles and the Naira Revelations. Although it's connected to those other series, this series will stand on its own. And, and that's a good thing because I haven't read the other series. This is my first book by Michael J. Sullivan. I enjoyed it a lot. It begins right off the bat with a confrontation between two men and a god. Belligerence meets belligerence. When all is said and done, Wraith's father is dead and so is the god. And he's inherited a new companion, Malcolm, and a new reputation, the god killer. Meanwhile, back at Dalai, a village of ruins, the people who aren't gods, just like just like Wraith, the chieftain has been killed by Grin the bear, a vicious man-eating bear. And after a trial by combat, a new chief is chosen, and the old chieftain's widow has been displaced because they have no heir. And so she goes off to, to what is supposed to be obscurity, but she's one of the heroes of the story, so of course she isn't. Meanwhile, also in Dalrain, Suri, a mystic, comes to warn them of impending danger. Sadly, the new chieftain is indecisive, fatalistic, and pretty much resigned to defeat and disaster. Any leadership that is going to be taking on these challenges, then, will come from the old chieftain's widow. And then back with the gods, the fray, they need to seek revenge for the death and go out looking for Wraith, but not just Wraith, but all of his people. This is a good pretext for genocide. And of course, no one can kill a god and get away with it because if you can kill a god, is it really a god? And Wraith, meanwhile, takes refuge in Dalrain. The Frey are involved in an internecine conflict. It's more of a cold war than a hot war, but they are struggling for power. The Frey are organized by craft with the magicians on the top and the warriors, the Instaria, on the bottom. There's actually a, an amazing battle between two of the Moralyth magicians. And it's not like one of those, you know, elemental forces with light zapping back and forth when I speak to the hand kind of battle. It's uh, original and new and not something you've seen before. There's four more in the series and all of them are already written. So Michael J. Sullivan readers don't have to suffer like George R. R. Martin readers, waiting and waiting and waiting for the next edition. And if this ever becomes an HBO series, there's not going to be any producers inventing stories beyond the author's plot line. However, to be honest, I don't think this will be an HBO series. There's no explicit sex and no rape. Women are not objectified and subjugated and humiliated on, a, on the daily. They actually have agency. They save the day. They will power. They're smart. They're wise. And like I said, no rape scene. So no HBO series. There's a lot of excitement. There's all sorts of plots within plots and double dealing and betrayals. 
And it's also considering, you know, we have people who are ready to take the world to um, genocide. There's that necessary bit of humor that keeps us from, keeps the whole series from becoming this grim, dystopic, miserable story. For example, Malcolm gets a spear of his own and he names it Nasirabad. And of course, Wraith asks him what that means because he doesn't know so. And, um, you know, you might think it would be giant killer or, you know, slayer of demons or slayer of things, but it's not. It means queen teeth, <laughs> which just cracks me up. It's one of the reasons I love this series. It's exciting, it's adventurous, it's inventive, and it's got humor. And uh, that's the Age of Myth. The Age of Swords is coming out soon, Volume 2, and I, it'll be out next month, towards the end of the month, July 25th. I'm certainly looking forward to that, too. Thank you. Have a great day. And enjoy the age of myth. <laughs>